Hello everyone, this is Dr. Greg again with uh, part six of our uh, series on exercise, brain health, and as we age, and the positive things exercise can do for us. Um, the implications of this study, I can't emphasize enough, is absolutely overwhelmingly, unbelievably positive for us older folks, because what's happening is we, you can have the power of your health it can be put in your hands. You can take over. You don't have to be subject to fearing that you're going to get Alzheimer's, you're going to die of dementia, what have you. You have the ability to take control of your health. And that's what this research, this massive research, has shown the positive effects of exercise, both resistance exercise, aerobic exercise, and mind-body exercise has on the overall health of our brain and our bodies. So let's talk about what exercise can do for the HPA axis. Now, what is that? Well, that is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The adrenals are found above your kidneys, the hypothalamus, and the pituitary are found in your brain. That axis actually uh, responds to chronic and acute stress. Now, what happens is, as we get older, we have less ability to react to stress. Our body doesn't react normally to stress, but what they found is that exercise actually helps that HPA axis work better over time. So that's amazing, because what happens with chronic stress? Well, as we age, the ability to adapt with and cope with stress diminishes. Chronic stress can overactivate the HPA axis, which can affect glucose tolerance brain chemistry, and autonomic functions. What are autonomic functions? Your heart rate, your blood pressure. It can affect those negatively. Chronic stress impacts the HPA axis, which reduces its ability to control those other parts of your body. So the brain chemistry, glucose, is very important for your functioning of your brain. If it doesn't, if it, glucose is not tolerated well, what happens is you develop these tau bodies and Lewy bodies in your brain that actually affect its function and that is associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. So you see that everything is linked. Everything has a purpose and when you don't function normally, things start to break down. Now, that is chronic stress. Acute stress can negatively impact our working memory. That's in other words, our frontal lobes have a little tiny thimble about the size of your thumb area in your brain that remembers things short term. And then what happens is your brain decides whether that's important or not. Well, acute stress affects that negatively. It also affects concentration, which makes sense, and thinking flexibility. In other words, you can't be flexible under chronic stress. And that all makes sense. Remember I had a video on how stress impacts your frontal lobe. And that's where all reasoning comes from, our working memory, and our ability to think flexibly. And that gets stressed or suppressed because the chronic stress suppresses the activity of the frontal lobe. Now, this is interesting. There is a study that shows that chronic stress in older adult, in adults can actually cause a two or three times greater incidence of Alzheimer's amongst older adults if they're under chronic stress. That's not good. Now, this is also interesting. Studies have, have shown that resistance exercises revealed a, a reduction in serum cortisol. Now, I haven't talked about cortisol. Cortisol actually goes up in chronic stress. Now, you've heard of uh, adrenal exhaustion, all that kind of stuff where the cortisol collapses. Well, what happens in the HPA axis, if it's winding up, if it's excited, it produces more cortisol. Now, increased cortisol are associated with chronic stress and also affect insulin levels, glucose resistance, blood pressure, cardiovascular health, okay? Now, there's evidence that resistance training exercise, and it doesn't have to be killer, actually affects that, reduces uh, cortisol levels. The other thing is mind-body exercises, which we talked about a little bit. And two examples of that is Tai Chi and yoga. Actually reduces cortisol levels and helps people um, navigate the stress easier 
and actually improves their mental health. So that's part six. I went through all these systems. There's a little more to go. I am going to put a little program together for everyone to see how easy it is to sort of affect your brain positively through exercise. I cannot again stress the how important and how empowering this research is. It just came out in 2020 and how you can take over your health. And we all need to because we can't depend upon a health system that doesn't necessarily listen to us all the time. We need to start taking charge of our own health. And this is Dr. Greg, changing the way we look at health.